Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend, and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. If you can right now, reach over, grab your Bible, open it with me as mine sits open to the book of Titus. Titus in chapter 3. Titus and chapter 3. Along with getting your Bible, get something on which to jot some notes. I've got three words beginning with the letter R to give you today. We'll begin them and complete them, Lord willing, on Wednesday, but also with that pen and paper for handy, you'll be ready to get from us our contact information because I want to become a partner with you and you with us in the whole work of giving out to people the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the real thrust behind these broadcasts and the parent organization behind uh, this broadcast. Bible Tracks Incorporated is the parent company behind Bible Track Echoes, and we have been publishing gospel tracks for 80 years, and I want to encourage you to get some tracks from us, but let me get us ready for a Bible study this way. One of the things I've done over the last number of years is gather devotional journals, and I do this, yes, because I myself benefit by reading somebody else's thoughts on a particular verse or a passage. Even we preachers need to be preached to ourselves. But another reason I collect them, the reason that's just as important to me, is that I collect devotional journals to help me preach. Because you see, often these journals have some really, really good illustrations in them. And good illustrations for a preacher, they're like gold to us. But there are some Bible passages that, frankly, no journal ever touches at all. The verses before us today are one of those set of verses. It's a passage about confronting a heretic. You see now why there are no sweet and cuddly devotionals written about passages like this one. Now, this is not a sweet and cuddly set of verses, but here they are, and we don't dodge things here. So how in the world do healthy churches deal with heretics, and how in the world will I know if I see one? Let's talk about that. Let's protect our churches here. Get your Bible. Get something on which you can jot some notes. In a moment, I'll begin to read in the book of Titus, chapter 3, at verse 10. I have a gospel tract in my hand. And, oh, friend, a gospel tract is a tremendous evangelism tool. The one in my hand right now is entitled, Are You in danger. Are you in danger? This track was written. Uh, it's not a long track. None of our tracks are long, and gospel tracks are designed not to be long, but to just gather somebody's attention around the things of the gospel and present to them the gospel and urge them to receive Christ. This tract here, Are You in Danger, was written for older elementary age kids in mind. It's a true story. This track is based upon a true story. Well, let me read you the opening of the track. It says, when I was 12, my violin teacher, Mr. Spencer, and I went fishing on the banks of the Red River near Moline, Illinois. North of the river is a large lake. It's connected to a swamp by a, and is wider and deeper than many other rivers I've seen. He goes on to talk about how they went out and they're out fishing at night and a thunderstorm came up and the car where they parked it was in danger of getting caught into the swampy area. And so this 12-year-old boy is left in this boat while the teacher moves the car and the only light that this boy had to see by was the lightning when it flashed. It's a great story and leads right into a great presentation of the gospel. Are you in danger? Beloved, I have a gospel sample pack, a gospel track sample pack I want to put into your hands. Would you let me do that? At the end of this broadcast, my announcer will give you our contact information. Use one of the methods 
Give us your name and your mailing address, and let me send you that sample packet. It's free, it's free, it's free. This one, Are You in Danger? It will be in there along with 40 other different gospel tracks. All tell the same gospel. They're written for different people, some for men, some for women, some for older people, some younger people. But you are going to find gospel tools that you can use to give out the gospel to more people. Please, let me send it to you. Or you can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, here we are, the book of Titus, chapter 3, beginning at verse 10. The Bible says this, A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Stop, please, right there. Well, to put it mildly, these are not the sweetest verses you're ever going to find in the Bible. But if you and I ever plan to have healthy churches for a long term, we're going to need these verses here. Now, chapter three, I have titled Healthy Lifestyle. What it describes is how the godly, healthy leaders of chapter one and the godly, healthy lay people of chapter two live out a godly, healthy local church relationship. Like anything begun by God, we need to expect Satan to attack it. God invented people. He created people, so Satan attacks them. God invented marriage, so Satan attacks that. God invented education, so Satan attacks that. God invented human government, so Satan attacks that. And God invented the local church and Satan attacks that. Now, all of these are attacked by the three biggies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. But Satan loves to attack local churches and get them away from the truth. Finding heretics in a local church is just simply part of Satan's attack to get the local church off of truth. So we've got to ask ourselves, what is a heretic anyway? Well, our English word heretic is basically just the English spelling of the Greek letters of the word that's used here in the, in the text, in the Greek text itself. Language scholars tell me that the word heretic originally meant simply to choose. But as time went on, the Greek word came to mean a self willed person who chose to reject truth so they could follow their own opinions. A heretic is one who not only rejects truth, but they won't even consider another view. They don't even like another's view expressed. Their own idea is king as far as they're concerned. And this kind of person in a local church will do two things. First, they'll produce friction. Secondly, they'll start a factions in the church. People end up having to take sides. And just to be clear here, we're not talking about petty issues. We're talking about doctrinal issues, issues like the authority and in the inerrancy of the Bible, about the deity of Christ, about the personhood of the Holy Spirit, the physical death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and that salvation is only through faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. These are the kind of doctrinal issues we're talking about here that heretics reject and want to have their own views about. I am going to use three words, all beginning with the letter R, to help me outline verses 10 and 11. Let me give you the three words right now. They are this, recognize, resist, and remove. Recognize, resist, and remove. Now, friend, God's people must first recognize a heretic or heretics when they reveal themselves in our churches. Secondly, we must resist heretics. And finally, we must remove them if they do not change their view, surrender their opinion, and start believing the truth found in the Bible. Now, listen, listen. My dear friend, everything, everything about your church stands or falls on this one point. Will the Bible be your church's source for truth that will dictate your faith and the practice of your church. Now, by the word faith, I'm talking about doctrine, what you believe, what you put your faith in as truth. By practice, I mean how your 
church will teach how God's people carry out the will of God that's found there in the word of God. We all are aware that many, many religious groups have over the years abandoned the Bible as their source of faith and practice. In most recent years, the issues have been about marriage and gender identity. Does God speak to the subject of marriage in the Word of God? Well, of course he does. Does your church allow for members and teachers, especially teachers, to hold non-Bible views on marriage? If they do, then your church has allowed for heretics in the church. What about our idea of uh, gender identity? Has your church allowed for members to teach and hold non-Bible views on gender? Then, if so, your church has allowed in heretics. I need to be quick here to add a statement about this whole discussion. Beloved, there is a difference between a heretic and somebody who is simply untaught. Oh, over the years, I have seen, you have seen, I hope, many new believers in the Lord Jesus Christ just newly saved. They start coming to church. They get baptized. There's an excitement. They come with joy to be part of the church, to learn the church songs and hear the word of God. But as they come and they're newly saved, they still have a lot of opinions that they carry over from their pre-salvation days. And those opinions are typically not in alignment with the Bible or what the Bible says. Well, what do we do with these people? Well, we do what the Bible says. We teach them the Word of God. We speak to them the truth in love. We disciple them, and we bring these spiritual babies in Christ along to become spiritually mature. And as they are taught God's word, it's amazing the indwelling Holy Spirit will show them that their old ideas are wrong and God's word is right. His word is truth. Now, this kind of person, they're not a heretic. They're simply untaught. Beloved, a heretic knows. They know what the Bible says. They know what's scriptural. They have placed their personal opinion above God's word. They have made their opinion to be divine and God's word not divine. That self-willed person is a heretic. And as we'll see on Wednesday, Lord willing, that person must be removed from your local church. If you don't, your church will no longer be a healthy local church. It's not enough for us to teach what the Bible says. It's enough for us to teach it, practice it, but then when people try to undermine it, we identify them. We must recognize who they are, call them what they are. We're going to see on Wednesday they need to be challenged based upon what they are. And Lord willing, the Spirit of God will turn them around, but often, often the heretic is just flat out unsaved. That's the problem. Maybe that's your problem. You don't know Christ as Savior. You need to swallow your pride, be broken before the cross of Christ, and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.